Just put the. All right, so we've had a an issue with the rock rider. We're not gonna sign blame. We're better than that. Huh? What? I said we're not assigning blame. I'm not the one that's been running it for the last three weeks and didn't notice a pile of dust under it. But... I noticed the pile of dust. Oh, I just well, couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And the phone doesn't work. FaceTime doesn't work. It's not perfect. So, since my dingy hand you probably have no idea. This ground cleaned uh, through there, right? Because we'll the bushing came loose. So this is a Covington engineering mad props california for riverside which is top of the line when it comes to rock tumblers and a lot of their other rock stuff so what we're going to do we're going to take some good old dang old jd weld here and we're going to which is a two-part epoxy metal paste and we're going to fill in the gap that's left by that shaft with hopes that it retains the bushing so seeing as how my eldest has no idea what JD Weld is. I figured it was a good opportunity for a video. So what you're going to do, this is a two part, you can see the black in the center, gray on the outside. Going to cut it evenly. Okay, the best way to mix a putty style epoxy. You can do the two part, which is a liquid, and that's a 50-50 mix and a stir. Best way with this, it's like chewing gum. I would say like from that Tom Cruise movie way back in the day, Mission Impossible, where he blew up the helicopter. Red light, green light, but y'all are way too young to remember that. Tom's a little bit out there, but the movies are entertaining. So you're already gonna smell it. You'll see I'm actually wearing gloves for this. It's one of the few things. Mostly because I don't like to start removing my fingerprints and sticking under my fingernails, because once it sets, it sets like steel. Yes, my dingy little hyena. Get us visiting dingy hyena. Say hi. Hi. You're on the channel now. It's a chemical reaction, so you'll feel it start to warm up in your fingers, and it's going to turn a consistent color from that light gray and that solid black in the middle. That's how you know you're just about there. You'll smell it too, right? Here, feel it right here. You'll feel this. Yeah, that's definitely warm. Right, so any epoxy will start getting warm when it starts to get. It makes sense, the chemical reactions. Exactly. So, gets hot. Yeah. I think what we're going to do, the bushing sits in there, which is plastic and its sleeve. So you're gonna squeeze it into where you want it to go, right? And it's gonna come up on the back side as well. You wanna put, now I'm not saying JB Weld is a pretty fix, right? But once it sets, it's gonna to be tougher than this aluminum that it's sitting in. Now it's almost to the point I can't, like it's already gone off. I can't even need it. Right, so you want to work with some expediency being the, the moral of the story. Yeah, see it's already set. I can't even pull it apart. So, set time, five minutes. Working time, one hour. There you go. It's gonna hold this bushing right here, this Teflon bushing. It's gonna hold it in place. We may even mix a little bit more after we do a test run to fill in these last gaps. But, give it an hour, we're gonna put this pulley back on, which is our belt tensioner, and that's for our dual shaft, which I'll show you once we put it back together and it's running. The key is to keep grease in these Teflon pockets for the shaft to run on, right? So there is no bearings with this. It's a Teflon sleeve, and it counts on that grease to take the uh, the wear right so you keep it lubricated they recommend a white lithium grease covington does i usually will use a high temperature uh, high pressure grease like using heavy equipment we bought some spraying some spray and tacky grease it's a high temperature but it'll have a straw which will make it easier my dingy hyena in law to keep it lubricated while I'm not around. She's over there sorting rocks. We can go over and look at what came out of the tumbler. Actually. That's why we're talking about the tumbler. So, hand me a piece of unfinished, Joanna. Yeah. So, when we got that tumbler, we got all of this. It's nice having a video assistant, actually. We got all this really rough jasper. And so, how long has this been tumbling, Jay? 
three weeks, right? You can already see the sharp, jagged edges of those are gone. She's probably gonna re-tumble these because she's not happy with some of the edges. And they grind at different rates depending on the mineral complexion, right? So, but after the next, what was this, a rough grind? Yeah, those ones need to go to grit too, but I don't have enough for a tumbler. Right, so what you'll do, you wanna explain the process of tumbling since you do it more than I? Yeah, you got this, you get this. No. Okay, so you'll put your raw stones in, right? Such as this. This is what we dug out yesterday before we were chased off the side of the hill. This is that flooring, right? So you can see some nice crystals in there, but all of this clay media that's on there. So if we were to tumble this stuff, it would remove a lot of this external clay and leave us some nice pieces. So we did get some nice chunks out of there yesterday before the flash flood. So I mean, this is everything we got yesterday. And we've got a really sweet rock that someone thought was worthwhile, which happens a lot. And then that just goes in the yard. So you can see a quartz seam in this one. So since there's so much that of them already in my yard, and my yard's rock, so it's convenient just to get rid of the things that are not worth the time to clean up and grind. Yeah, see, maybe tumbling because you got some crystals there. So we got, it's hard to see with all the shale on it, but you can see crystals inside, which we could use the rock saw to cut it open and see what's there. We've got a big piece that came off when it was formed by those geysers. And you see perfect squares which is kind of wild when you think about it, that nature formed this, you know, I don't know, 300 million years ago during the last uh, series of eruptions. But yeah, perfect squares in nature. You only get that with crystalline, and that's usually metamorphic rock, which metamorphic rock is, uh, so you have sedimentary, which is where we dig for fossils. That's what's left over from the old oceans, and it just settles down. And when the plates slide over each other, it skins that part. But in where the tectonic plates run into each other, you get extreme pressure and temperature and that takes all these minerals and stuff and it squeezes them into metamorphic rock right so that's where you get diamonds and stuff like that because yeah. diamonds take a lot of pressure and heat and then you have the igneous rock which is basically magma that came up and you don't find you don't typically find as many like gem quality crystals in it because it's just lava but the temperature is so high that that's where you'll get all of your precious minerals and stuff will be floating on the top of it and then they get squirted up with geysers and that's where you find gold and stuff like that so there you go so once the fix is done jay's going through her her tumbled rocks Hello. the dingy hyena what do you got there yeah there see so the once these are fully polished so you run it through the rough grit then you do a second grind with a lighter grit three grinds or two Three grits and then the polish. And then the polish, it'll look wet like this forever because it's removed all those micro scratches I was talking about on the grinder. So you can do it on the grinder a piece at a time, but for large batches to find the colors and the striations that you're looking for, you would just tumble it if you can fit it in the grinder. Very good day. All right.